you cannot keep me away from anything that's about the environment or about oil. I'm very uh, into both topics. And I want to thank the Central Texas American Indian Movement for coming out today and uh, bringing their presence. Um, so on the topic of the Keystone Oil Pipeline, when proponents extol the values of it, they typically refer to job creation and reducing our reliance on uh, oil from Persian Gulf states. And I want to sh uh, shatter both of those myths right now. The State Department estimated that the Keystone XL will create 20 permanent jobs. 20! 20. 20. Wow. And the end line final pr uh, process oil uh, has been predominantly promised to be shipped overseas, which was mentioned before. Are we really interested in threatening the Ogallala Aquifer? Countless family farms, large swaths of land belonging to indigenous communities in Canada and the U.S., the existence of the boreal forest, and the general health of the planet at large to create jobs numbering less than half the capacity of your average city bus? Oh! Thank you. If we want to create 20 jobs, let's open a putt-putt mini-golf and call it a day. I want to take this step uh, a step further, though, because whenever the so-called powers that be have an insidious plan afoot, they try to sell it to the public as a mode of job creation. Well, here's the news. Not all jobs are created equally. Creating a job in the tar sands industry is not equivalent to creating a job at an organic farm. Creating jobs in the military-industrial complex is not equivalent to creating jobs in sustainable water catchment, education, or medical industries. We should reject all suggestions that we create employment for half of the population in sectors that profit by riveting shackles around the necks of the other half. Yeah. Tar sand usage is insane. It's barely economical. And the fact that so much effort is being shifted towards tar sands, and for that matter, shale, is proof that our way of life, dependent on constant and growing access to cheap energy, is coming to an end. Tar sands are the junkie economy's last fix. First, tar sand is not oil. Tar sand is just what it sounds like. It's sand, clay, and bitumen, which is basically tar all mixed together. To get energy from this glob, first there must be vast strip mining, which decimates the land and the surrounding site. It takes two tons, two tons of tar sand to make one barrel of oil. But first, this bitumen must be separated, and this is done by washing, yes, washing sand with heated water, then sending it through an agitation process. The separated bitumen is not light, sweet, jet clamp it crude. It's a sticky asphalt that requires vast refining to be usable as a liquid fuel. As far as the numbers go, don't be fooled. Global oil usage is roughly 80 million barrels per day. The U.S. alone uses 20 million barrels per day on its own. Oil sands accounts for less than 2 million, 2 million barrels per day. And like all jobs not being equal, all oil is not equal. There's a concept called net energy. This takes into account the energy return on energy invested. Conventional petroleum used to have a net energy ratio of 100 to 1. That means that for every 100 barrels of oil, it took only one barrel's worth of energy to extract it. Today, conventional crude tops out at a net return of 30 to 1. Tar sand has a return of about 5.5 to 1. This number does not factor in externalities such as environmental degradation, water loss, negative health effects, species extinction, or social costs. But ultimately, it gives us a clear picture of where we are globally, as far as our consumption habits are concerned. The modern economies of the world have been predicated on vast returns in our energy investments. When we struggle for low returns and threaten vast land bases, ecosystems, and all the lives that depend on them to achieve such returns, we can see clearly that we are at the twilight of this system. Now, we can either read clearly this writing on the wall, accept and embrace a low-energy, low-consumption, negative-growth future, or like junkies, we can destroy everything in our paths for one last fix. Do we want to let the drug pushers at TransCanada, Sin Crude, Valero, and Shell to profit with every last tree felled, every last drop of water poisoned? Or do we want to fight for our home? Do we want to continue placing a dollar value on life itself? Or do we want to reject such psychotic abstractions and, embr and embrace our place in the ecosystem at large? We will be judged by all creatures who come after us, not by how politically savvy or expedient we were, but in our willingness to fight those who would destroy the one planet we have. We will be judged not on how much we were willing to shout or scream, but on how much clean, drinkable water remains, on how many forests thrush with life remain, on whether or not simply breathing the air is a cancer-causing activity. So far, indigenous communities have put themselves on the front lines, putting their bodies on the line to halt the machine. We cannot al allow them alone to bear this burden. We must occupy the machine. We must beautifully declare our alliance with life and accept the risks and punishments this culture of death admonishes upon such valiant and selfless spirits. We cannot have a future to promise to our children while simultaneously dismantling the present. 
When they beat their drums of oil, of propaganda, and of war, we must overwhelm them with the beating of our hearts, bringing clear and true all of us together. Thank you. Yeah.